Hey everyone, welcome to FabForge 5. I'm glad you're here. We design and build fun and unusual things, and we always learn something new along the way. Today, we're gonna to make some changes to the M&M launcher we built in our last video. That launcher, at a press of a button, measures the distance to a bucket, and then calculates the proper velocity, and spins up a small motor, and launches an M&M to land in that bucket. It worked about 80% of the time. It was pretty fun, but we can make it better, faster, and stronger. We'll do that today. And we may accomplish two of those three things. We'll see. Stay tuned. Forge 5. Last time we built our m, m launcher, it worked pretty well. Basically, you push a button on the top, it uses a ping sensor to measure the distance to a bucket. That sensor then feeds that back to the Arduino. The Arduino does some quick calculations, figures out what the velocity of the m, &M should be when it leaves the launch chute, and then it decides how fast to spin the motor that drives our little launch wheel here. Now, when it sets that motor speed, it picks a value between zero and 255 and starts spinning the motor using that. So that's a pretty broad set of values. It just takes a guess at that. It doesn't actually measure the RPM of the motor. If we rebuild this so it sets the motor, turns it on, then measures the RPM with a feedback system, a control system, and then adjust that RPM, tell us exactly right before it launches the M&M, we should have a lot more accuracy. And it should be a lot more fault tolerant too, and I'll explain that as we go. So we will rebuild this. We're going to add this IR sensor to build a little tachometer for our wheel to measure its RPM. And we'll also take a crack at redesigning this tower here that holds our motor. See if we can make that a little uh, more efficient. I'll give you a clue. It may or may not work. Uh, but then we'll have some good fun testing this, rebuilding it, and we'll see what happens. So we should have this a lot more dialed in, a lot more fault tolerant, and a lot more accurate. We'll see what happens. Let's have some fun. I'm going to try using the generative design function in Fusion 360 to redesign the motor tower. Generative design basically lets you set up all the load conditions, the beginning size, beginning shape, etc., of a part and then it runs through many iterations to optimize it for the best strength, best um, use of materials, etc. So our DC motor tower is this guy right here. All right, we're going to see if we can redesign it and make it more efficient. Right now it's kind of big. So I ran through the generative design process, set up all the different conditions and boundaries and loads, etc. Took a bit of learning curve on my part, but it ended up designing something that looks like this. As you can see it's much smaller, <laughs> a lot smaller. Uses a lot less material. Um, it's an interesting shape, a little bit more organic. But in looking at it, I kind of realized I probably set something up wrong, like probably the weight of the motor, for example. But I'm going to go ahead and 3D print it. I'm going to try it. Here's the part in our Prusa slicer software. Here it is sliced, and here it is after being printed. So it definitely matches the design we did in Fusion 360. And you can see it will fit. It'll fit the motor. It'll connect to the other parts of our M&M launcher assembly. No worries there at all. It uses a lot less plastic. You can also see it's very flimsy in this direction. Now it's strong in this direction, but flimsy in this direction. That's because I forgot to put in the weight of the motor. So you can see it kind of needs a third leg right there. So I'm going to use a little manual <laughs> uh, extruder and see if we can build that and make it stronger. First time I've used this tool. And we'll see what happens.
well great idea but it broke almost right away so we're going to just for fun try replacing the motor tower anyway i'm curious how this will look and i'm sure you are too so we'll give it a shot Here it is, all mounted up. It's very loose and it is not going to work. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I don't think that means what you think it means. Well, whatever. I redid the Fusion 360 generative design with the correct parameters to start with. And here's a quick look of what it came up with. This actually looks workable. That thing looks freaky. Well, it just looks organic. I've noticed that generative design, when the design, design's done properly, it often looks like a tree root, like something an insect might make, etc. It is a little bit freaky, a little bit odd. What that kind of tells me is that nature is really good, just by default, at generative design and making things very efficient from a material and strength perspective. Kind of cool, but we'll call this a failure and we'll move on and uh, add our tachometer now. So as we look to add our tachometer to our m, &M launcher, we have a problem. We need to use timer interrupts on our Arduino to make our tachometer work correctly. An Arduino Uno, which we're using, has three timers. One is always in use for certain things. The other two right now we're using for both our motor and for our servo. They're used for the pulse width modulation for both of those motors. We can't use them. We need another timer, a fourth timer on an Arduino to use for our infrared tachometer. So we can't use this Arduino Uno, but we can use a bigger Arduino, an Arduino Mega. It has six timers total, so we'll have a few to spare. So we're going to have to replace our Arduino Uno with a larger Arduino Mega. It will use the same code, but now it gives us another timer. First, we'll remove our Adafruit motor shield from the existing Arduino. It will plug into our new Arduino Mega. They are compatible. And now we'll remove our Arduino Uno And we'll add our Mega. Now you can see the Mega is much bigger. And it doesn't quite fit on our existing green tower. We'll have to do a redesign for that in Fusion 360. And while we're at it, we'll redesign our tower height also, so we don't have to have that spacer that we used in our first video.
Now let's mount our IR sensor. I made a small plastic uh, adapter for it. We'll mount that on our old new tower. And then we'll mount the IR sensor on top of that. The IR sensor has uh, infrared LED and an infrared sensor. The LED lights a, uh, lights the path ahead and the sensor looks for reflected infrared light and it has a small adjustment on it to adjust the sensitivity. We'll mount that on our adapter and it will sense a reflective piece of tape on our launch wheel. At least that's what we hope. I learned how to make this tachometer from an instructable by Great Scott Lab. Check it out. I'll put the link down below. It's worth the visit. I've been working on debugging the code for our new tachometer feedback. It's a little bit tricky. Timers are a little tricky. This is a control loop system as it measures the RPM and then changes the, uh, the actual RPM. Um, but I'm getting there. It just takes some time to figure things out. When does the fun start? This is the fun part. I don't have all day. I uploaded the code. Now let's give it a test. Our uh, Arduinos and the motor shield are powered by 5 volts from our USB outlet on our power supply. And then the DC motor is, it needs at least 9 volts, so we'll use our adjustable voltage output of our DC power supply for it. It can be powered anywhere between 9 volts and 15 volts. We'll try changing that and see if our RPM feedback system can adjust for a change in voltage. We'll do that a bit later. Let's take a quick look at how the m and launcher works from the front side. So when I push the ping button, you'll see the light, uh, green light light up here on the ping sensor. It'll send out a quick pulse forward, ultrasonic pulse. Listen for the echo to come back. It'll calculate the correct uh, motor velocity. The motor will start spinning. And then once it gets to exactly the right RPM and settles in, you'll see the feed servo slide over like this to feed an m, &M into the feed chute. Let's take a quick look. And then it slows itself down and turns itself off. That's it. Let's give it a try with some actual M&Ms. First, we'll load the feed chute. Hooray! It worked. You can see how the RPM adjusted itself as it settled into the goal of the green line. Let's increase our motor voltage. That will make the motor spin faster at the beginning, but our feedback system should slow it down to the right RPM. I'm feeling good about this. I'll call the president. Not quite yet. Ignition sequence start. All engine running. Lift off. Airborne base here. M and M has landed. All right, the M and M has landed. A big milestone in the history of M and M launchers, I, I'm sure. So you can see the difference here in the RPM curves based on the motor voltage. The blue is a nine volt setting for the motor. The RPM settled up before you know, falling into the green zone. At 12 volts, the orange line, the RPMs had to settle down into the green zone. And basically, as long as it's within 10% of the green goal, that's when the uh, the launcher launches the M&M. You can see, though, it took a little bit longer for the 12 volts to settle, but they both work a little bit differently, but they did settle in. That's the whole purpose of a control system. 
All right, we had a fun time making our M&M launcher enhancements uh, during this video. Uh, control systems, you know, it worked. I mean, control systems are in lots of things you're familiar with. They could be as complex as a autopilot in an aircraft. Um, the engine nozzle gimbling system as a SpaceX rocket lands. If you watch that, it's reacting to different forces to keep the rocket balance just right as it comes down. That's a great example of a complex control system. Could also be anti-lock brakes in a car. In that case, it's measuring the RPM of the wheels. If they stop spinning when the brakes are being applied, it assumes the car is in a skid and releases the brakes just a little bit to let them start spinning again. Uh, that's a great example of an RPM curve. And it would look very similar to what we measured with our M&M launcher. Could also be as simple as the thermostat in your house that just regulates the temperature. Regardless of the external weather, it keeps your house feeling nice and comfortable inside, hopefully. So control systems are everywhere. They're used for lots of different things. They basically make a system nice and robust as things change around it with external influences. It seeks to keep itself working in just the right way. So for our video today, did a few things. At the very beginning, we said we would try to make our M&M launcher better, faster, and stronger. We didn't get all three done. We didn't make it stronger. We kind of failed at the generative design, but two out of three isn't bad. So I think we'll go ahead and declare success. Order some donuts. Fantastic. So we'll celebrate with some donuts. So next time we're going to do a completely new project, something fun and unusual that you've never seen before. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and, uh, and subscribe. Leave a comment. I'd love to see your comments. And uh, until we see you again, uh, make sure to take good care of each other. We'll see you later. Bye.